Hi everybody, welcome to another Monday. It is New Start Monday Knits here at Wildflower Wool and I hope your week is going great. I can't believe Monday has come and gone already. It's been a long weekend here so I did not work so it feels really like it's Sunday but it's Monday night. Um, so I hope everybody's had a great long weekend. If you had a long weekend, did you get a little extra knitting time in? I did a little bit of yarn dyeing. We did some yarn dyeing last night over the campfire. So I have got some balls to show you. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how the yarn is going to turn out, but it was a super lot of fun anyways. So let me see here. We have got the voting. So we're voting on some of the yarn that we dyed last night. So I picked the yarn and it was just what the project was going to be. Was it going to be socks or was it going to be a one skein shawl? Hi everybody. I see a few people coming in here. Hope you got your knitting and just kicking back and relaxing for an hour of knit night. Um, I have got a little bit of work on a project. I think it was new start from two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two weeks, hopefully just two weeks ago. Last week's project. I don't have handy. Um, I'll have to show that one to you next week. That was the blue Kool-Aid dyed yarn. Um, mixed berry, the variegated. Really like the light, the, the blue, and then really, really pale almost to a almost to a white. That's being knit up into a scarf, but it, it is still packed in some of my bags because I just got home not that long ago. So I will show that to you next week. But let me show you some of the yarn. I'll show you the yarn that we dyed. Okay. There is a bit of a story to this. And I I gotta be really careful because look at this container. <laughs> What's the bottom look like? Ooh. So this is what was on the fire pit. And this is the yarn that we dyed. So as you can see, there is there's some nice variation in this. So I'm really interested to see how deep the color went into the ball. So what I did was, ooh, yuck. Okay. <laughs> I just grabbed some balls of Patton's Croy to take with me to the cottage and thought, you know what, we'll dye some yarn over the campfire. We did it a couple of years ago. That was with some yarn that I had bought at the farmer's market. And it was, it was some really rusty cute wool. It was like a Briggs and Little wool. It was a sheep farm, had to meet sheep and they were also shearing the sheep and then they had some yarn there. Some was dyed, some was undyed. As soon as I saw undyed yarn, I bought some, went to the grocery store, but I think food coloring and the, all the kids dyed up, dyed up some yarn that year and it was lots of fun. So this year the kids were a little bit older, so they're not really kids anymore. They're practically all grown up, but a couple of them helped me and we had a lot of fun. So we used some Kool-Aid and some food coloring. Those greens, oh, I'm going to pick them up again. So you can see the two over on this side are just Kool-Aid. These two over here are Kool-Aid with some green or blue, I think blue food coloring. It was blue, a bunch of, and I don't know, the kids were doing the food coloring, so I was just sitting back kind of watching. So there was a bunch <laughs> of food coloring. Nobody was counting drops, but you know what? It didn't really make a big difference. On screen, these guys over here look a lot lighter. Hmm, I suppose it is, I suppose it is. These ones here are darker, but not considerably darker, considering all the extra food coloring that went in to the, uh, or dye pot. So I didn't, I got black fingers again. So I didn't take any time to skein up these balls of pat patents. Croy. Almost a classic wool. Everything else I've been dying is classic wool. This is Croy. So I just thought, you know what? We'll just throw the ball in. We'll add the, the food coloring, the Kool Aid, and we'll get what we'll get, right? It'll be, it'll be a fun project. So I actually soaked these in the lake as well. Thought we need the whole camping experience here. I could have I could have just soaked them in the in our tinfoil trays, but I thought, where is the fun in that, right? So I will post either some video or a reel or something on Instagram showing what we did. 
It was a lot of fun. Put on lots of sunscreen and hats and carried our yarn down the beach. Had one lady stop me. I will I will get to who what the winning pro project is here, but I always have so many stories with all these things. Um oh the pink yarn. Oh pink yarn. I just saw Carrie's or um sorry, Sherry's comment. Okay, we'll get to that one too. So yes, so there was a knitter sitting on the beach as we are carrying all of our stuff down you know the the rest of the, the um the people that i i was with you know they had books i took a book with me but really that was just a prop because i didn't read um but i had my yarn i had my knitting and we found a spot on the beach that so was the rocky beach so there was no sand and um we soaked these. Okay, maybe I should do who won first and then I'll get into stories or I'll be here. I'll be here for an hour telling you stories and we won't know who won. So look, I'll pull up. These are not rinsed yet because we didn't get that fancy last night. But this one here definitely is darker. So I don't know what I will do. Maybe I will mix the two together. I'm just going to use green. So you guys were voting socks or shawl so we all know what well, most of you know right patents croy is 50 gram balls a little heavier sock weight yarn it's a 75 25 i think i'm still dripping this one doesn't seem to be dripping oh yes maybe a little bit it is 75 25 super wash and uh super wash wool and nylon so i need two skeins here so no, maybe I'll mix them. Maybe no, 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 no. That's just getting complicated, isn't it? I think I will and do it. So yes. So socks won. Socks was the hands down winner between socks and shawl. A few people voted for shawl, but way far, far, far ahead. Socks were was the winner i think pretty much right from the start i didn't i had like almost no internet connection all weekend long so um um oh it said puno socks diane did you vote for a shawl yep so socks was the winner yeah facebook instagram stories yeah every, pretty much I think it was three quarters, like 75%, 25%, if I was just to roughly guess. Liz says, yay, I picked a winner. Is Lynn here tonight? I know Lynn was saying last week that she never, ever picks the winner. And so I was looking through, I saw her comment, and I'm like, yes, she picked socks. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lynn, you are a winner tonight. So, anyways, I'm going to knit some green socks. It's going to be so much fun. I was kind of hoping you guys would pick socks. There is a few more colors that I'll show you that uh, the other two skeins of green, I think I will put those into a shawl with the other colors that the kids, the kids who are 16 and 18, probably wouldn't really appreciate me calling them kids, would they? But you know, it's like, they're always, they're always going to be kids, right? So I think there's going to be a fair amount of white in here, I think. Do a Christmas stocking. Oh, Diane, that would be a fantastic idea. I was kind of thinking of a Christmas shawl. So there is a lot, there's some light in there. And I think, I'm guessing, it. when I skein this up, I'll post some pictures on Instagram. But I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be some weight in here. These ones aren't too bad, though. I don't want to make too much of a mess of this. But my thinking is this stuff is super wash and the classic wool that I have been dying with all the Kool-Aid is not super wash. Super wash sucks up the dye super, super fast. So I'm thinking with this Croy being super wash, it just like sucked it all up right on the outside without really giving it a chance to soak its way all the way to the inside. So I'm not going to be too surprised if I've got some white in there, but it'll be lovely. And if it's not, 
could still dye it once I knit socks with it. Um, I, I could always dye it again, right? And just touch it up a little bit. Put some more green food coloring on and see what we get. So anyways, so yes, I think I kind of just started talking about socks and so but yes, socks was the winner. So thank you guys for voting. I am really, really excited. Now the big question is how am I going to knit? Like what needles? Am I going to use my flexi flips? Will I use my long flexi flips? Will I use my little nine inch circular? So many options. I might just use my flexi flips again, just because I have them and I like them. So that, that is it. So let's talk a little bit more about the whole dyeing process. So the campfire, I didn't take time to skein all of these balls because we had eight of them. And that would have taken way too long and taken time out of our dyeing fun. So we just soaked the ball. So <laughs> we went down to the beach. Okay, so back to, I started my story about the beach. So yes, I'm carrying yarn with me down the beach as one does and this woman we were passing this family was sitting and um they they were they were all set up they had like shade tents and like they were there for the day and but she did not have her knitting i did not see her knitting and she asked me she's like what do you, what do you have there she thought it was like buns or something if she could see the top of the the white croy balls she's like what do you have there and i thought she thought it was like some pastry or something yummy and I'm like well it's yarn because we're gonna dye yarn and I'm bringing it down to the lake so I can pre-soak it so then that started in a whole conversation she was telling me she's been like a knitter since she was six years old she designs her own patterns she loves everything super complicated she doesn't like plain knitting and she's doing um, a blanket that is all super super intricate and so my sister-in-law and my cousin's wife and my nephew was with with me and you could tell right they're kind of st standing there kind of shifting and i can tell they're and so they finally they just carried on walking and so i just kept looking to see where they were so i could find them on the beach and uh i saw i, well, I, saw, I stood and i chatted with this woman for a while and she told me about there were these rocks on the beach that she said, have you ever tried dyeing with these? She said she had never dyed before, dyed yarn, but there was these rocks. And she said, when you ground, you ground them up, her, her grandchildren had been playing with them and they were all along the beach and I don't know what they are. And uh, anyway, so we gathered some up and she said, you should try dyeing with them. So we ended up, we didn't dye with the rocks because we would have needed kind of like a cheesecloth bag or something otherwise it tr it, it turned to clay and I was like I don't want that in the yarn but my sister-in-law was with me who is a potter she is Zenfire pottery she's a fantastic teacher and potter so she was totally intrigued we collected some of these rocks and she ground them up using another stone it turned into all this powder and then just got wet because she, she was sitting on a rock just a little bit off the the shore and uh and got it got it wet and just really worked it into a um a paste and then she made this little bowl out of this rock powder um anyways and then so she put it into the fire pit when we were dyeing the yarn she put her little bowl into the fire so she could fire it just like you would a kiln so it was it was quite the experiment for her and then at the end of the night after we were all dying done with the yarn and the campfire she buried it in the the coals that were left and left it overnight so anyways um yes so that was that was our fun so we <laughs> We were, Angela was doing pottery, I was dyeing yarn, so we soaked the yarn in the lake. We had to kind of take some big rocks and make kind of like a, a fence, just because I was worried that with the waves coming in and out, that they may take the balls out into the water, and I wasn't prepared to get into the water because it is freezing cold, and I was not going to be about to like run into the cold water. Mind you, I would have. I would have. To save my yarn, I would have. Um, 
but I, like, I don't never go swimming in that water because it's just so, so cold. So anyways, um, the, uh, so I had big rocks and I plunked my yarn in there and just let it soak, sat on the rocks. I don't, not one to like sunbathe, but it was kind of nice sitting in the sun, but I had my big floppy hat on, lots of sunscreen and just kept my yarn in the water. It didn't try, the, the waves, like the tide didn't try to pull it back out into the lake. It more, when the waves came in, it pushed it onto shore, onto, onto the rocks. So then I was forever pushing them back into the water <laughs> a little bit. Um, then there was a big boat went by and it got rough. You don't want that to happen when you're soaking your yarn in the lake because just the, all these waves coming in and out, in and out, in and out, they were coming in so strong that they actually moved my rocks. And I, yes, Susie, I do have a picture of um, Angela with her little bowl. So I will post some of those. Um, check on Instagram, because I'll probably do, like, make it as like a little reel or something. And, and I will post them this week. So I use like big, not boulders, but, heavy rocks like it wasn't just like little rocks we took big rocks because the when we say the rocky beach it is rocky <laughs> and we took these big rocks and put them kind of around to make a semicircle and then this up here was the shore and these big waves came in and they the moved the rocks <laughs> moved the rocks that's how much power it had so my my poor yarn that was just in the ball they were going like this <laughs> against the rocks. And then they started to kind of come undone. And they got a little tangled. And I was like, oh, no, this could be a catastrophe. But I just very gently picked them up, put them back into my little foil dish. And away we went back to the cottage. And then I sat there and I untangled all of these strands and kind of wound them back up so it was it was okay but note to self next time if i see a big boat coming i may scoop them all up and we'll wait till all the waves calm down and then plunk them back in again but it did not take that long i don't know we i don't we might have sat there for 20 minutes it didn't feel like that long but it was it was just so nice being out in the sunshine that um we weren't in a real rush to head back. So anyways, they got pre-soaked in the lake. And then we went back. We started the fire. And I had thought that maybe it would take a long time for the water. I'm going to hold these tray. This one never went on the fire, so it is not black. And I thought, so I had it pretty much filled with water. And I thought, oh, shoot, I didn't bring anything for a lid. I just kind of grabbed stuff quickly as I was walking up the door. So I didn't really have all the supplies that I probably should have had. Um, and so I thought, okay, with the campfire, right? With the, the air, it maybe take a while for it to heat up. No. And I guess, I guess when you think about it, how somebody was Googling how hot the campfire gets. And that was more for Angela with her little pot. And somebody said, uh, somebody was Googling and it says something about, 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, which we thought would be like around 900 degrees Celsius. Anyways, it got it got hot and it got hot quick. It didn't take long at all before we saw steam coming out of the water and just just started to bubble. It only started to boil like almost on the verge of boiling one time and then I just kind of pulled it back from the flames but my my nephew Nathan he was in charge keeping the fire going and he just kept putting a little bits of wood on so there was just a nice little bit of flame underneath and just kept it really at a simmer just like it would have been on the stove so we did these colors as well and these are all just food coloring I only had a few packets of Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid. <laughs> so I took what I had. So what I did, I had two pa two packages of pineapple and two packages of very berry, berry berry. Yes, berry mixed berry, mixed berry, the blue. 
So I blew in my hip and yellow, and I really wanted to mix them. Nathan was really concerned because the pineapple is almost a little bit orangey, and he was worried that we were going to get more of a brownie color. And I was like, ah, oh, let's try it, right? I like brown. If it turns brown, I'll be happy with brown. So we poured in the uh, blue into the water, got a really nice blue color, poured in one package of the pineapple, and it definitely went green, not, not brown. And, uh, and that's what we did. I, I just kind of watched my phone for about 10 minutes. I had tongs and I kind of turned the skein over once in a while because the water wasn't super, super deep and then just let them sit. And by the time the 10 ish mark was up, you could see the water in the foil pan was clear. So then we just used tongs. I took them out and set them on the grass and did the next skeins. So the next ones were the darker green. And that's, we did the same thing. One packet of the pineapple, one package of the mixed berry. We got the green and then they put in some blue food coloring, trying to darken it. I don't know if we were trying for brown. We were, we were actually trying for brown. And you know, most times you don't want brown because then it's considered like a muddy color and not something that you're really really probably going for, right? Because everybody wants to have really fun, exciting colors. And what we were trying for brown and we couldn't get it. <laughs> so then we went to, we almost got it though. Then we went to these ones. We, all we had left was food coloring, just the little bottles, the liquid food coloring. And when we dyed these two skeins, we didn't put any other mordant in there. Typically with food coloring, you do have to have something either powdered citric acid or vinegar. But I've been watching a ton of videos from Chemnitz and uh, she has got so many great um, tips and things. So, and I've been watching some videos where she had dyed with Kool-Aid and said that there's enough citric acid left in the dye pot. Even though the dye is absorbed, there's enough citric acid that you could um, throw in another skein with um, like food coloring or so that's what I did so we just put in some food coloring and I think this was just some reds and blues I think and it's like a antique rose dusty rosy kind of color you can see there there was a this was this obviously was a wayward strand that got almost tangled and I had kind of <laughs> wrapped it around so there's going to be a little variation there and yeah, definitely lighter. So this was probably up in the water and didn't get quite, but that's all right. That'll be interesting to knit up. So now food coloring, I had no idea how many drops of Kool-Aid or food coloring to drop in there because it's been years since I've actually died with that. So the kids were just playing with it. And I was just like, keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. Cause they were putting in like three or four. And I'm like, oh no, 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 like put in a bunch. <laughs> so they were like, and then all of a sudden it was like a whole bunch. And they were like, well, we have no idea how many that was. So we weren't even counting, but it, um, it, uh, hopefully this will be okay. I'm worried that these, the food coloring ones are going to have way more light color in them than the than the Kool-Aid. Did I say that right? Food coloring is going to have more white than the Kool-Aid. The Kool-Aid looks like it went in a fair amount. I'm wondering if the liquid food coloring is more just going to be on the upside. So these ones, the food coloring ones, I'm wondering if I might have to supplement with a little something. We'll see. We'll see. But, you know, really the biggest bonus of all this yarn was just the fun that we had and whatever we get from the yarn is just you know going to be a, a true bonus so then we had two other colors so that kind of dusty rosy color again just let it sit for about 10 minutes the water went pretty much clear and then the i just let the kids go get crazy with these last two skeins and it's almost brown. It's kind of an orangey color. Taylor, she 
She apologized so profusely because she was she was trying. They were dropping in the food coloring around the skeins, and then one drop of green went on, and she's like, oh, and I'm like, don't worry about it. But I said, I said that's how you can see how quickly it just sucks it up because as soon as it dropped, you know, it didn't disperse in the water. It just really. Let's see this. How far? I bet you that doesn't go in there very deep. It's just. Oh, uh, it goes down a little bit. Yeah, it does actually. It does go down a bit. So I said to her, I said, this will be, you know, fun because I was looking at all these, the greens. And we were thinking, because I think we were trying to go like brown, green and brown. So I thought, okay, next time we're all together, it'll be Thanksgiving. I will knit a shawl out of this yarn and I can wear it at Thanksgiving, what, you know, what we dyed. And then we started doing the greens and we got this pink. And I'm like, hmm, is this looking more like Christmas? So I don't know what it's going to end up. It's going to look more Christmassy or Thanksgiving. But this this looks more fallish. So anyways, we decided the green is just going to be Taylor's little um, signature. And I told her, I said, don't worry, it's not going to knit up in like a, a blob of green. It's just going to have a little bit of green kind of spread it, right? Yes, Nikki's saying a rusty brown. That's, it is. So I guess we did kind of accomplish our brown. So there's some lightness back there. So I'm going to knit it up. I'm going to wear a shawl to, I don't know. I'll try. Maybe I'll aim for Thanksgiving, have it done for Christmas. <laughs> and then we can just see, how, you know, what our, what our fun cottage little experiment turned into, right? But it was a lot of fun. And it didn't, I mean, it didn't take too long. We, by the time we were done, it was getting to be about dark. So it was maybe about an hour, like 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes to an hour, kind of 10 minutes for every grouping of yarn. So anyways, it was a good way. It, it filled the night and then we just pulled everything off the fire. I just let it, left it in the grass to kind of cool. And then I just put it right into the shade. Um, so this morning when the sun came up, I didn't want the sun on it because that I think when it's wet and you'd, you'd never want, you don't, you don't want to dry it in, in the sun. So, cause I think that, that would, that will fade it. So it has kept it in the shade. It's still wet. Haven't rinsed it yet. So I will do that. I don't know, not tonight, <laughs> but maybe tomorrow night. It'll be, it'll be fine. I think just to sit here and I'm going to re I'm going to reskein it. Then I'm going to rinse it and then I'll let it dry and then we will knit with it. So tons of fun, great cottage memories for sure. So that is that. So socks, you guys, if you're just joining in the green, it was socks or shawl. Everybody was voting socks. I really want to reskein these because I'm afraid there's going to be a tangled mess. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So that was a whole, whole lot of fun. I would, I don't know. I would definitely say try it. If you're up for it. So I saw Sherry was talking about this one here. This is one that I did at home during the week. I did way more dyeing than knitting, you guys. But this is some classic wool. I had I bought Michael's out of classic wool, at least the one store. And um I know I think this is my last game. I might have found one more downstairs but I've pretty much used up all my white classic wool now. So I had this one skein left. I had it skeined up, so I still had my, my pots and things sitting here in the kitchen for doing the Kool-Aid dyeing. So I just so pre-soaked this yarn and just put it in a, in a pot on the stove and I simmered it. And I only simmered these guys for about six or eight minutes and it that's all it needs to soak up the Kool-Aid. And this one here, is two skeins, two skeins, two packages of strawberry kiwi. And two two packages with 100 grams of wool soaks everything up. You can rinse it and there's 
no no dye comes out so there's a nice variation I did not dip dye this one all of my other classic wools I've been dip dyeing this one here I just had both my packages dissolved into my pot of water it was simmering and then I just plunked the whole thing right into the water and you know, and I was I was almost worried that it was going to come out too solid because I like having like a tonal or a gradient kind of look to it. And yeah, I think it would be really hard. I think if you wanted to do a solid, I think it would be hard to do because as soon as it hits the water, whatever's whatever's on the bottom whatever goes in the water first because it just literally like in that split second starts soaking it up so whatever's on the bottom is going to get darker than what's on the top which is fine for me because that's the look that I'm going for so I thought this was really pretty so I'm going to work this up knit this up into another scarf for Christmas time to go with all my other Kool-Aid dyed scarves I thought this would be really fun too for somebody who likes pinks there's just some nice Light sections so I think it'll it'll knit up it'll knit up really pretty it's kind of like um shell pink that popped in my head kind of maybe like a peachy maybe some more got peachy colors in there it's not real bubble gummy pink at all but it's really pretty I like it I am definitely embracing pink a little bit more than I ever used to. So I did that. So I have to say, now don't hold me to this, but I may have um, um, had my fill of Kool-Aid dyeing. <laughs> I may have had my fill because I finally went and got my little dye area in my basement set up again. And I moved on to some acid dyeing. I was going to do some writ dyeing and I just didn't get to it. So who knows? I've got the writ pulled out, so I may I may do that too. So oh I see Audrey saying green shawl with the leaf pattern in lace. That would be nice with all that green, wouldn't it? Hmm. That would be good. So, anyways, here we are. This is Patton's Croy as well. I had a bunch of it. Now, I think it was last week. Did you remember me saying I kind of looked over to the side and I thought I saw two bags of of white croy? I was correct. I did. I had 12 more balls, you guys. <laughs> so I have I think I've dried it all now. Plus, I bought two more while I was up at the cottage because our cottage, the grocery store there, has got yarn upstairs. So they had two balls of Croy, and I bought them. So this is Jacquard Acid Dye, and this is teal. And I don't know why I picked this. Well, look, see that little ball right there? See this? And my orange crush shawl that I just finished this week. This is what I knit on. <laughs> Are we seeing a trend here? So I don't know. Anyways, I just finished this in this color and I dyed this to do a two skein version of the orange crush. And apparently they're going to be the same color. So maybe I'll put this one in the Christmas box and I will do this one for me. Who knows? Anyways, this was, this was, um, yeah, this was teal colorway. And it turned out really, really nice. Now, my only little, I don't know, not problem. It'll be interesting to see how it dies up. I have run into this before when I was dying. Now, most of, most of the yarn that I've dyed is always Croy or Classic Wool. Sometimes Briggs and Little. And I know with Patton's Croy sock yarn, I have had this problem in the past where you put the yarn in and no matter what you do, there are sections of it that will not take the dye. And it's almost like 
there's a coating on there and it just it, it just the dye just literally runs off it I've taken before like an eyedropper and mixed up more dye and like and spooned it on there or, or dropped it with a eyedropper and it it just dissipates away from it is that the right word I want to say anyways it just like it just like it runs off it and I do not know why so if anybody knows I would I'm curious I don't know why but there again I mean I'm fine with little bits of white I was more hoping I would have tonal teal than a little bit of white but oh well I'm thinking it I'm just embracing the color <laughs> you know it'll be it'll be unique it'll be fun it'll be little pops here and there and pretty much every skein has a little bit of white and it wasn't necessarily where a tie was one was close to where the tie was but others were not close to the tie so i um so i just left them sit so these were done so these are 50 gram skeins so there was four 50 gram skeins i had a super super big like stock pot that i used for dyeing and I had it on a stovetop, and I just dumped all four skeins in all at once. Trying, I wanted them to be similar so I could use them all for for like a two skein shell. And um, anyway, and so they all dyed up. I mean, they look the teal wise, the color wise. I think they all look basically the same. They look like the same dye lot. Just some of them have these interesting little white patches so it'll be fun to see how this knits up so this was definitely a lot of fun and I'm going to do more more dyeing but I just need to replenish my stash of white wool so I'm going to do an order and I am definitely I'm going to get I'm not going to get any more patents for dyeing I am going to do a do a proper order and get some yarn that comes in a skein so I do not have to skein it <laughs> may just have to um retie it right so you don't have any weight in the uh where the ties are so guys this is my this is my orange crush shawl that is blue striped <laughs> but pattern is the same and I got it finished which I'm really happy about I love it so I should actually untangle my hair and I will put it on so let's see so let me okay let me talk about this first off <laughs> okay no okay this didn't work the way I wanted it let me go like this hold on get the hair out of here first okay so this oh Susie says knit picks has a nice with that bay yarn and skeins okay see I made I may go to Knit Picks. The only trouble with Knit Picks is, is the Canadian dollar and the exchange rate. But I will check and I will see. Oh, bear. Oh, bear yarn. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, there we go. Um, so I finished knitting this. This is the pattern that the Fiber Friends are doing for the August challenge. Now, if anybody has been stocking Ravelry, which maybe you guys are not, um, you will notice the pattern is not there yet. <laughs> and literally, I was going to, it, there's a whole story for this too, but I will make this one super quick because it's not near as fun as the yarn dyeing. You guys all know that I have tech problems, right? I am. I have a little tech challenge and I thought I had it. I mean, I have put patterns up on Ravelry before. I haven't done any designing. Well, I have I have been doing designing, but I have not published any patterns in like a couple of years, not during COVID, definitely. And uh, so I had new software. I've got the pattern all done. I've got all the information in Ravelry. I just needed to connect the PDF to Ravelry and hit publish and it would be good. I cannot get it to connect to the PDF. So <laughs> I, that's what I was working on just before I came over here to chat with you guys. So 
I will, um, yeah, I will keep working on that. Okay, so I see here, Sally asked, will it block larger to see the pattern? This, I have not blocked this one. <laughs> I just finished, I just finished this one. It, um, so unblocked. There it is. That's unblocked. And so really the answer is no. Unless you maybe use larger needles than I did. I did a four millimeter needle. My gauge was about was seven stitches. So this one here is blocked. Hold on. That one's blocked. Is that maybe a little bit more open? If you went a larger needle size on this pattern, I would definitely go. Um, oh well, I would go bigger needle size. If you're if you're debating between needle sizes, I would go bigger rather than smaller, just so you would get a a, a bigger finished shawl. Just because you know one skein doesn't give you a super super big, it gives you a nice. Charlotte, if I need to say <laughs> or a scarf, right? Um, let's see. Um, what else can I say? So, anyways, hopefully I'm gonna play around with the pattern tonight. Surely it can't be too tricky, and it will be. There, but it will be there shortly. It was. It was my original plan had been to have it there Saturday, and then my plans totally changed on Saturday and we ended up going to the cottage which we weren't so it was like a whirlwind like pack everything pick up Eric and be up there and it's a, a four-hour drive and we were aiming to be there for supper so I took everything with me and I thought okay I will work on it later in the night and I and there was no internet like none none so that didn't work I took a little drive um, out where somebody has said they had luck getting some self-service. No, I was able to do an Instagram post, but I couldn't actually open, um, anything or yeah. So it didn't, it didn't happen. So anyways, that was that, but it is this close to being up and then people can cast on. So maybe we will, anyways, <laughs> that's the story of that, but the pattern's all done. And it is all set to go. So as soon as I just get the little kinks worked out, it will be um, up on Ravelry. But we did have fun. Do you want to hear another story? Okay, I've got a little bit of time. We had fun. We did a photo shoot <laughs> with this because I took, of course, I took a shawl to the beach on a you know, crazy hot day. I actually ended up wearing this just so I would have it over my arms because even with sunscreen on I could just feel the sun so I had it on more as as a sun protector <laughs> but we had fun we did a little photo shoot on the edge of the water and uh, it was lots of fun so I put some of those pictures are in the pattern so I thought what I may do is when I when I publish the pattern at the end of the pattern just kind of do a collage, you know, kind of like a bloopers reel almost of photo shoot pictures. Just, I don't know, just for fun. I don't know if anybody else will like them, but I thought they were fun. So um, we did that. So anyways, that was fun. So let me see. Um, okay, so did you, so Nikki says you saw the pattern there, but not for sale yet. So yeah, so did you check tonight? Because I was working on it and it is it is all set to go. It is there. I just can't connect it together. So I will I will play around with it a little bit more. And um <laughs> I don't know. It better work because if it doesn't work, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Maybe I don't know. I'll have to figure out what I can do. Oh, Nikki says you can help with that, Louise. Okay. All right. And Nikki, I'll, I'll send you a message when we're done, um, if it's not too late for you. But anyways, anyways, tech stuff, always learning. I try to think of it not as technical issues or problems. Just think of it as learning opportunities, right? 
And let me tell you, I have learned so much. The fact that I can even get this to stream in the correct spot. Oh gosh, I should not even have said that, should I? Um, is pretty fantastic, I have to say. So anyways, okay, so let me just take a peek here. At, have, did I do anything else? I have a feeling... I think I showed you I showed you guys this last week, didn't I? But it was, yes, I'm sure I did. I remember talking about this. So this one here is going to be pretty. It's going to knit up. And I think I'm just going to do a bunch of scarves. I think I'm just going to stick with scarves. Maybe the odd cowl. If I get tired of scarves, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just switch it up and do cowls, right? <laughs> we'll see. But I'm thinking, I'm already thinking Christmas time, you guys, which is amazing for me because usually I start, I start thinking about Christmas really early, but I actually start knitting about, you know, November 2nd, which obviously is problematic. Oh, I do have more knitting to show you. It's nothing new, but it is a little update on the project from a couple. Oh, okay. I've got, I have something else I can show you. Anyways, this is it. Mixed berry. And no, 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 wrong, wrong Kool-Aid packages. This was with the green, mixed berry and pineapple. That's what we mixed together to get the greens. This one here, the watermelon yarn. This was the lemon lime, strawberry lemonade, I think is what these ones were. So here it is. And it's got, uh, a little bit longer, a little bit longer. I'm loving knitting on this. This is the B stitch, you guys. It is um, nip below, nip below, which is really a lot of fun. And it gives you really nice texture. I like how this yarn is knitting up. You know, it's not, not cooling. But it does, it's amazing how in the camera it shows up so much different. It's just so, like these stripes are so much more sharper than in real life. It is just all blended together, but on the, on the camera here. And these look white, but they're not. They're a light pink. So it really is just a, a, a blend of colors. But I really like it. And let me look at it. I was going to say, I've only messed it up once. I've only had to pull back a little bit because my B stitch is offset. So let me show it to you a little closer. So see there, we've got a, a nipple stitch and then up here and here, right? So you can see they're offset. Only one time so far have I stacked them by accident because, you know, I'm getting all confident that it's a four row repeat and I don't have to mark it or keep track on a row counter because I can count to four in my head which if you guys know me I cannot do that very well when I am talking you know doing knit night and knitting because I will be it's only two pattern rows two knit rows two pattern rows and I only have to keep track of if it's like really pattern row one or two and even on, what do I have here, 20, 23 stitches I think I have, I still end up kind of getting confused. So I have, which has been a very good thing because I am now getting better. Not, I was going to say very good. Maybe I'm just going to say better at reading my stitches because these ones are a little trickier, right? Because it's just not knits and pearls. You have to see what is the actual knit stitch and which one is the knit below and, and you have to offset them. So it's, it's, it's been a good practice, a really good practice. And when you make a mistake and you have to unknit it is also really good practice because it's easy enough to knit, unknit your knit stitches, but when you unknit the knit below, you have to pick up your stitch because when you nip below the stitch that's on the needle falls off and becomes a drop stitch. And that's what gives you okay, the kind of loop that goes behind. So what do I want to show you? Okay. 
this pinky stitch. Can I, okay, I'm not sure if I can do this. Yes, this is the one I want. So you can see, can you see? Okay, this green right here, there's a V stitch right there. And then you can see the strand that goes behind the stitch. That's what the drop stitch looks like. So if you have to unknit that, you have to pick up that strand and make that your stitch on the needle again. So it is really good practice, unknitting, picking up stitches, like very good learning opportunity here. If you want to do B stitch and then make, an, make a mistake and take it out, it really, you feel like you're improving your skills for sure. Anyways, and I just think it is a really, really fun stitch. My, my chair, I don't know if you can see this, but my chair has got a knitted cover on it. And I did this a lot of years ago. And it is just, oh, that's herringbone. Anyways, there's a bunch of stitch patterns in here. And um, and one of them was bee stitch. I think when I did this chair, it was a guild project to, hmm, I don't even forget what, what I had made the challenge be. If it was a household, or maybe it might have been like the most unique knitted item or something. And I had this idea that I was going to like upholster this chair which I did. And so I just did it as um, a sampler and B stitch was one of the stitches I did on this project. And that was the first time that I had ever knit B stitch and I fell in love with it. So um, definitely was one that I wanted to do for the self scarf project. So that is that. That has been my week of knitting, you guys. It's been a little of this, a little of that, a lot of yarn dyeing, a few computer tech problems. But overall, it has been good. And I'm really hoping that with getting the orange crush shawl, all the kinks worked out with this, that it will spur me on to get the rest of my patterns that I've been collecting over these last couple of years, get those wrote up and get them published and kind of get things back on track. So that has been my week. How has your week been? Is anybody out there close to a finish? Because I am not. Jocelyn and I are checking in, doing our, yeah, it is an actual check-in month. My gosh, it's going to be Thursday. It's going to be the first Thursday of the month. So Jocelyn and I will be here at 730. And we both had goals. I had two goals. I had two goals. Jocelyn had like a whole ton because she was doing what stash dash, Jocelyn. So you wanted to get like everything done so it would count towards your challenge. So we'll see. Did we get our goals done? Did we attempt them? Did we remember what we were supposed to do? That is always the first challenge for us. So anyways, that's I'm going to be busy knitting. And, and it's already Monday night. It's so great. My weekend was an extra day longer, but that means I'm an extra day short now for getting ready for Jocelyn's. Oh my gosh, I see like a bazillion comments here, you guys. Okay, let me kind of look back. Okay, oh, Nikki says it looked like planned pooling. Yes, my scarf. We'll go with that. My plan was that it was not going to pool. <laughs> that I was hoping that with just a small, like I think it's 23 stitches, that it would not pool, that it would it would knit up consistently. So I'm happy with how it's looking. So let's see. Yes, Jocelyn's saying this Thursday. She's Jocelyn is pretty close to a finish for the podcast. She has four goals. Silly girl. No, I do not have to, I, four goals. No, no, no. <laughs> what time Thursday? It is 7.30. So half an hour earlier than tonight. And it is here on this YouTube channel. And yeah, Jocelyn and I, we always have such a fun time when we chat. And it can get long. Just be prepared. I try to keep Monday nights like to an hour. Jocelyn and I usually go an hour and a half, an hour, 45 minutes sometimes, <laughs> which is kind of crazy because we, we plan nothing and talk about everything. <laughs> so it is always lots of fun. Diane's asking, is it, is it at the brioche stitch? So the B stitch, you know what? It looks a lot like that. And when I, the first time, so when I was doing my, my cute little chair here, I had I probably had never done brioche, so I never kind of made that connection. But when I was knitting it again now, 
that's exactly what I thought it seemed very similar to. Because you guys, if you've done brioche, you know the brioche knitting itself is fairly easy. It's, you know, slip and knit some pearls. It's, it's um, with some yarn overs. Um, but it, it's, 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 it's pretty easy. The tricky part with the brioche is if you make a mistake and you have to unpick it because yeah, you've got slip stitches and yeah, it's just, yeah, <laughs> you gotta, whoops, sorry, sorry guys, I jostled you. Um, yeah, you have to be a little careful with that. So really now thinking about it, this would be a good stitch pattern to play around with as a kind of beginner to brioche. Oh, the stitch check says it's in the brioche family. See, you know, Diane, I am thinking I've got a I've got a stitch pattern, a brioche book, and not this last, not this last time that I've taught brioche, but before I was kind of delusional thinking that people are going to get brioche just like this. And you know, at the end of our whatever it was, two or three night classes, that we would have time to kill and people would want to do extra stitches, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, that didn't happen, of course, but there was something very similar to this. Um, yeah, because you can, because brioche, you can do, this is a whole other tangent here, you guys, but brioche, you can do some other stitches. It's not always, doesn't always look like that kind of faux ribbing kind of look. It can look different. So Diane, I think you're absolutely onto something and, and you must, and obviously, right, you said your stitch, stitch, blah, blah, blah. stitch dictionary, yeah, kind of confirms that. So this would be a good beginning step towards brioche. I think I'm going to, I may incorporate that into my, my brioche class. Diane, thank you so much for kind of leading me down that path. I like that. Diane says it is in the brioche family. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. Let's see. Any work on my socks? Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> I really, really wish that was a different answer. I really wish. Um, but no, but maybe if I stopped dyeing yarn, I could actually knit something. So the fact that I now have, I don't want to say completely, because I'm sure if I looked, I could find some white croy or classic wool. I'm sure there maybe is like a skein floating around somewhere in a closet or project bag somewhere. But pretty much I've dyed everything that I have. Well, except for this stuff. But I don't know. Well, this one here, I don't think I can dye this. I think this is, oh, yes, I should be able to. Yes, I can. Oh. What's this? Chroma Twist Bulky. It's um, super wash wool and nylon. But, hmm, I think this is supposed to be in a project. But these two, I actually did. I bought these at the Hamilton Fiber Forge. Was that like the end of March, maybe? Rambling Yarns. I love this yarn from Link Farm. This is a farm down by Niagara. So kind of local, you know, a, a couple hours drive. And they have got really nice yarn. This is this is nice. And I did buy this to dye, but have not dyed it yet. So this I could use, do, use this with some acid dye. But I got two skeins. Ooh, that could make, what weight is this? <laughs> not super wash hand wash only double knit double knit okay this could make a nice um orange crush shawl too just go bigger size bigger needle okay maybe i will dye that maybe my dyeing days are not done you guys but maybe that will be next weekend after jocelyn and i have checked in and And I don't, I'm not going to say anything more about that. So um, let's see here. Oh, 
Hello, Elena's here. I'm just going to, let's see here, Susanna. Oh, what is, oh, Liz says socks. Yes, Susanna, socks was the winning project for this week. Yes, so Jocelyn's also saying, so Thursday night is 6.30 her time. So if you are in Jocelyn's neck of the woods, 6.30, 7.30 Ontario time. Yes, and we have to be done. So we have to be done by, yeah, so 9 o'clock your time. Okay, this is like time. <laughs> yes, so we usually don't go any longer than an hour and a half because Jocelyn has to get ready for Critical Role. So I, I'm just going to carry on knitting, so it doesn't really matter to me. But, um, yeah, so we do try to cap no more than an hour and a half. So it's a good night to get out a big project and get something to drink, get nice and comfy and come join us. Oh, okay. Well, Jocelyn, as soon as I get the pattern up, you will be set. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Jocelyn said, okay. Yes. You're close to a finish for the podcast. Any work on my socks? Yeah. I'm going to, going to ignore that. <laughs> Sally, because um oh Nikki said you made this mistake on your first published patterns. See, yeah, okay. Well, if Nikki will check, I know it's yeah, this is different than I don't know. Hopefully, Nikki, I you'll just it'll be something so simple that I'm just not seeing. Um Oh, you think you know the problem. Good. Let's hope it's, let, please tell me it's something simple. Um, because I'm good. I can do what I know. But as soon as, you know, things upgrade and you have to, to click a different button, I mean, something even, it's like once I know it, I know it. And like, don't change it on me because then I am back to like totally square one trying to figure it all out. So yay, maybe Nikki can be my savior. Nikki says she decided to spin for the orange crush shawl rather than dying more, but I did die. Oh, oh, so you spun and died for the shawl. Oh my gosh. It will be your own dyed and spun yarn. Nikki, you are so creative. Oh, okay. So Jocelyn, you, yes, because Jocelyn's just got, oh my word, Jocelyn, what's the name of it again? It's pie. All I can think of is pie because it's dessert. Um, Jocelyn just published a really nice, like a, like a 300 gram, like a three skein asymmetrical shell. So same shape as this, just bigger. Really, really, really nice. So Jocelyn, do you want to type the name of it down there? Because all I can remember is pie. Pie made me do it. Pi made me do it. Is that it? I think that's it. Oh, okay. Oh, so Jocelyn says she can help me too. Oh, thank goodness. I have smart techie friends. <laughs> oh, Sherry said, um, I know because uh, yes. Okay. Sherry says it's there, but yes, can't get it. I know. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get that, the problem solved with the pattern and it'll be, it'll be all set. So, okay, that I'm just kind of scrolling back here. So we'll just chat for another couple minutes. We're just past our hour mark. Oh, yes. So, okay, yes. So back in the hand dyed. Yeah, except for that little green dot. It does, yes. It kind of looks like an orangey brownie color, doesn't it? Oh, Susie said the food coloring that you did was really vibrant, but it was, oh, 10 grams each. Yes. So I don't know. And I, you know, and honestly, I don't think I, I'm not going to die enough with food coloring to be too concerned about trying to go dying again and to see how, how many drops, because what I really didn't want to have happen was get way too much dye in there and then having to rinse and rinse and rinse because I just it makes me cringe I don't want to I don't want to waste water with excess having rinsing to get out stuff so I would I'm much happier having a little less color in there than too much especially for this because it's just whatever right oh Lynn says you'd love chemnitz she is a wealth of knowledge she is 
and always cheery her i know she is so fun i would i would really like to meet her in person yes yeah, sally my yarn had quite an adventure it did it was in the lake it was over the fire <laughs> it was yeah we we certainly had a really fun weekend for sure all right Oh, pie made me do it, Shell. Sus Susanna is putting it in there. Yes, pie made me do it. Pie. Oh, look at all you guys know it. So, oh, does Cheryl pop in here? Oh, Cheryl, are we starting Orange Crush today? Maybe. Hopefully. Let me talk to to Nikki and Jocelyn first, and I will get back to you on that. If you, I'm sure you probably heard just the the part of this, right? Tech problems. But anyways, it's it's already, I just have to be able to connect the pattern. So fingers crossed, and it will be up later. Well, hopefully soon. All right. Well, everybody, I think that is about it. I'm going to continue on with my laptop and get this pattern up. And then I kind of deal with this green yarn. I gotta, I'm going to, I'm going to reskein it. That's, yeah, that, I'm going to do that. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna rinse it and cast on some socks. I'm thinking flexi flips needles. I like this. I like having options for needles. And truthfully, honestly, it's going to be whatever I can find that <laughs> that is not already on has something on it. So we'll see what that's going to be. So hopefully next week I will have my blue scarf out here because it is another stitch pattern that I really really like. I will show that to you. Maybe the lovely bee scarf will be done. The colors are really nicer in person. On this green, it looks really kind of blah, doesn't it? But it's not. It is pretty. I will I will take some Instagram pictures just to show because it doesn't look nice here. But it is it is very pretty. So maybe this will be done. Maybe I will have something done when I see Jocelyn Thursday night. We will just have to wait and see. <laughs> it is. I will surprise myself come Thursday. So everybody, this has been super fun. Cheryl, we are going to have to chat about dyeing yarn over the campfire because you are the girl that goes camping all the time. Um, I will catch you up and we can talk more about dyeing over the campfire because I know you will want to do that. So, okay, guys, thank you so much for voting. I'm so glad you voted socks. I mean, a shawl would be good, but I've been knitting a lot of shawls and I really want to get some socks done. And if I want to get my 12 done for the year, I'm going to have to get myself knitting some socks. So thanks guys for voting. Thanks for coming here and chatting with me. It's always a great way to start the week. And we'll see you all Thursday night when Jocelyn and I are here. Have a great week. Happy knitting. And we'll see you Thursday. And if you can't make it Thursday, we'll be right back here Monday with another new start. Good night, everybody.